Okay, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at solving quadratic equations by completing the square and the square root method. Uh, in this particular lesson, the squares will already be completed, uh, so the focus of this lesson uh, will be the square root method. Uh, just to get you introduced to the topic, uh, let's look at a relatively easy example here. Solve x squared is equal to 9. Uh, so what number times itself is equal to 9? Uh, in this particular case, there's actually two answers. 3 times itself is equal to 9, and negative 3 times itself is equal to 9. A uh, common error that can be made algebraically is if you just take the square root of both sides, you would only get that x is equal to 3. Uh, so something that we need to be careful of, because this is wrong, is when we take the square root, we need to take plus and minus the square root uh, in order to account for the positive and negative value. Uh, that square to give you that answer. So this would be x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9, which is positive and negative 3. Okay. Uh, in this next example, what we're going to do is just realize that most, a lot of these questions can be done by inspection. I will look at algebraic methods later on. Uh, but if we look at the squared term uniquely, so this perfect square here, uh, it should be evident to us that that has to equal 4, because 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. Uh, and if we look a little bit even more closely at it, uh, we should realize here that this x minus 1 has to either equal positive 2 or negative 2, because negative 2 squared and positive 2 squared uh, are equal to 4. Uh, so in this particular case, just solving by inspection, we can see that if x equals 3, that would give us a solution. 3 minus 1 squared is 2, 2 squared or 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, uh, or in this particular example, we would get a solution of x is equal to negative 1, uh, because negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. Uh, in the next example, solving by inspection, uh, <clears throat> what you'll be able to see is, in some cases, there are no solutions, because if we look again uniquely at the perfect squared term, that would have to equal negative 4. And that is impossible, because anything squared can't be negative. So in this particular case, uh, even just by inspection, we can see that there would be no solution. We'll see algebraically later on uh, also how we can get to that result. Uh, in the next one, I'm going to look at solving this algebraically. The important thing about solving these algebraically is that the x has to be, or the variable has to be uniquely contained within the perfect square, and that's what we need to isolate. And then there's a few more steps after that. Uh, so firstly, what we would do is subtract 32 from both sides. We would get negative 2 times x minus 3 squared is equal to negative 32. Next, you would divide by the, co by the coefficient negative 2, and we have x minus 3 squared is equal to 16. And then what we can do is take plus or minus the square root of both sides to cancel out those opposites. And we have at this point in time, uh, x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 4. And if we add 3, this literally means that there's two possible answers. Our two possible answers are 3 plus 4 and 3 minus 4. So our two solutions are 7 and negative 1. So that's how we can solve algebraically. Um, the key ideas for this section, and then we'll look at some specific examples, uh, is that the vertex form, to reference from a previous chapter, of a quadratic equation should look familiar to you. It's a times x minus p squared plus q is equal to 0. That kind of looks like the vertex form of a function. Uh, to solve a quadratic equation using the square root method, which is what the focus is uh, this lesson, the variable must be uniquely contained within a perfect square. Uh, so as an example, uh, because in this one, for example, x minus 1 squared minus 4, the variable is uniquely contained within the perfect square. You could use the square root method. However, since in this next case, uh, the variable is not only contained within a perfect square, there's this extra one not within a perfect square, you cannot solve using the square root method until you've completed the square, which is what our next lesson is focused on. Uh, and finally, to solve quadratic equations of the form a times x minus p squared plus q is equal to 0 in vertex form, you need to isolate the perfect square 
and take plus or minus the square root of both sides. So this perfect square needs to be isolated. And then there's some following algebra to go. Um, what we're going to do for the rest of this lesson, you may want to pause your screen and try some of these yourself, are these six examples. So uh, you may want to pause at this moment and try them. I'm going to go over them relatively quickly uh, at this particular point. All right, uh, in this first one, the perfect square is already isolated. So what we can do is take plus or minus the square root of both sides. So at this point in time, we have h plus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12. And as we subtract 2, we have uh, h is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12. Uh, since this example says express answers as exact roots in simplest form, uh, we may remember that 12, if we do a factor tree or anything that has 2 times 2 times 3, so this pair can be taken out as a 2, and it'll be simplified to be 2 root 3. Um, we'll be focusing on that a little bit more later again. So the simplest form here uh, is h is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 3. Uh, in this next example, the perfect square is not uniquely, or it is, it is there, but it is not isolated at this point in time. So we need to do that. Uh, if I add 27, I will have 3s squared is equal to 27. Divide by 3, I'm left with s squared is equal to 9. Take plus or minus the square root of both sides. And we'll have s is equal to plus or minus 3. Uh, just out of interest sake, we could have also solved this by factoring. Or let me even show you the graph of this particular one just to prove to you that there are connections uh, in this entire unit. So here's the graph of y is equal to 3x squared minus 27, uh, which is also right here. So the solution should be the x-intercepts. And as you can see here, the x-intercepts are negative 3 and positive 3. So kind of cool. Uh, in this next one, we need to, again, isolate this perfect squared term uh, by dividing by the coefficient 2. So we have x minus 1 squared is equal to 0. Take plus or minus the square root. And we have x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 0, which is essentially just 0. Uh, so after we add 1, all we're left with is x is equal to 1 plus or minus 0, or 1. Okay. Uh, next, we need to, again, isolate this perfect square. We're left with x squared is equal to negative 16, and that is impossible. You cannot square a number to get a negative value. Uh, or, if you went one further step, you may notice that if I take plus or minus the square root of both sides, uh, it is just impossible to take the square root of a negative number. So in this particular case, there will be absolutely no solution. Uh, in these last two examples, the focus is going to be putting this into exact root in simplest form. Uh, the algebra is going to look identical. Uh, it's just that it's going to probably appear a little bit more difficult to get to our final best result. So if I take plus or minus the square root of both sides, I have d minus 2 thirds is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7 ninths. Uh, to put this in simplest form, this is the same as plus or minus root 7 over root 9, and root 9 is also 3. So at this point in time, I can make this plus or minus root 7 over 3. Uh, next, when I add 2 thirds, I will be left with d is equal to 2 thirds plus or minus root 7 over 3. Uh, that would be simplest form. Uh, another way that you could represent this, since they have a common denominator, is you could combine the numerators uh, to make it look even a little bit simpler, which would be 2 plus or minus root 7 all over 3. Uh, that's another way to represent it. And in our final example, uh, I need to isolate the perfect squared term, so add 5 eighths to both sides. I'm left with r plus 1 squared is equal to 5 eighths. Take plus or minus the square root. I am left with, in this case, uh, r plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over square root of 8. I'm just separating uh, the numerator and denominator to show you that this can actually be simplified. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 can be simplified to 2 root 2. So at this point in time, after I subtract 1 from both sides, we will have that r is equal to negative 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2 root 2.
what we could do further uh, is what's called rationalizing the denominator. Uh, I don't mind if you leave it at this point, uh, but to rationalize the denominator, we would multiply the numerator and denominator here by root 2, uh, because this would now make a whole number of 2. Uh, so that would give us a simpler form of negative 1 plus or minus uh, root 10 over 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. So that's simpler with a rationalized denominator.